Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's Sergeant Thomas here again. Alright, that was that was a horrible intro. Let me let me just do it. Let me do it like I normally do. Hello ladies and gentlemen. No, that's not how I do it. It's usually Hello everyone, Sergeant Thomas here. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep all this in here and I'm gonna redo it again, ready? Hello everyone, Sergeant Thomas here, and I'm back with another Minecraft video. See, that was better. I'll, I'll just, I'll, we'll leave that one as well as the, all the mess up because I don't really care. I don't care if you like it or not. I don't care. I'm leaving it. Um, no, but really, I am here building a modern house, and this could possibly be my last modern house built on this 360 before I take it outside and burn it. No, I'm just kidding. No, but really, I might. Uh, this might be the last time I build a modern house on the Xbox 360 since Minecraft Xbox One Edition is so close to being released. I can almost taste it. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it is close because 4J has recently tweeted that the PlayStation 4 version has already entered cert testing, so hopefully the Xbox One Edition isn't far behind and we get it soon. That would be awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm just here building this modern house. And I've been, I've already tried recording three times, but I just keep messing up or I just don't really feel it. And I restart. And so this is the fourth time I'm restarting. Um, but what I've been talking about here is uh, Robin Williams. Uh, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, know who Robin Williams is or who he was. And if you don't, you should look him up. And if you do, then you'll know who Robin Williams was. And he was a, a great person and a great actor. He was hilarious, funny comedian. And I'm sure most of you that do know who he is also know that he just recently passed away two days ago. And it's a very sad day. You know, in Hollywood, in the world, just in general, you know, to everybody that knew who Robin Williams was, I know it touched you in some way. It may 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 or may not have made you, you know, cry or whatnot, and that's fine, whether it did or didn't. But, like in my case, I felt very sad inside when I heard the news that Robin Williams passed away. Because, you know, not just because he was a funny actor or a comedian... He was also, you know, a loving husband and father, and a lot of people didn't know, like myself included, I didn't know he suffered from depression, at least not to the extent that he did, like I didn't know at all, honestly, that he suffered from depression, which lots of people do, but you don't expect people, you know, at his level to, you know, really let things like whatever was causing his depression to cause it, you know, but depression can just cause, you know, can just be there for being there, you know, there, sometimes, if I'm not mistaken, you can just have depression for just this, for the sake of having it, you know, it isn't like a scientific fact that, oh, I have depression because I'm, you know, not rich and famous, I, I don't know, but basically what I'm saying is, you know, it doesn't matter how rich and famous you are, or how happy you look on the outside, you may, you know, suffer from things like depression and, and among other things. And it's just really sad that, you know, from what we understand, and it hasn't been confirmed yet, but that he, you know, took his own life. And only one can imagine, you know, how bad it really was for him to, you know, get to that point where he felt like he wanted it, you know, to end. And, you know, the best way was to take his own life. And that's never the right thing to do. You should never, you know, consider, you know, suicide as being, a, uh, you know, a way to escape reality. You know, we all suffer, you know, through things in life, you know. I don't care who you are and I don't care how, how bad, you know, it is whatever it is you're suffering through or how, you know, not bad it is, you know, everybody goes through things in life, you know, they may they may or may not be mental things like depression or anxiety and things like that it may be physical things where you can't walk you can't do this, you can't do that, 
You know, everybody deals with things, even stupid little things. You know, fight with your parents, you know. But it, it again, it just, it sucks that he's gone. And there will never be another Robin Williams. You know, that guy, you know, aside from him, like I was saying before, he wasn't just funny, you know, he was a family man and, you know, a good person at heart. But back to his funny side, that guy, there will never be another Robin Williams. That guy was hilarious you know there's lots of funny comedians out there that can make you laugh in an instant but in my opinion there aren't too many like robin williams that can make you laugh as hard as you would you know like there might be this guy this comedian over here and you yeah, you'll laugh and you know he's funny you know in an instant you know he can be funny like you know quickly you know and I have to think about it. He can be just right there funny. And Robin Williams was one of those people. But he was... There was just something unique about him. About how he... You know, his body language when he would make you laugh. The guy was hilarious. In a way, I I wouldn't compare him to Jim Carrey. Because they're totally different in reality. Um, but like, in my personal... I don't I want to say opinion, but... Personally, Jim Carrey is my favorite comedic actor. Um, I don't know why. I guess maybe because he's, you know, more of my generation, kind of. I mean, they're they're both the same age. I, I don't know. But Jim Carrey was definitely my favorite comedic actor. And if I had a top five, uh, Robin Williams would definitely be in my top five, if not maybe my second and I'm not just saying that since he passed away, but going back since he's passed away and looking at some of his stand-up and interviews and, you know, quick clips of some of the movies he was in, the guy was just, he was a genius at making people laugh. And, again, there will never be another Robin Williams. So, you know, that sucks. But, like my dad's always said, none of us get out of here alive. <laughs> but, uh, still, you know, that still doesn't, you know, make it right to, uh, or think it's right to take your own life and think that that's the answer. And this isn't no, like, public service announcement or anything, but, you know, if you suffer from depression or you think you do and you haven't gotten help, you know, just, you know, ask somebody for help, you know. You know, even just to help you, guide you in the right direction to maybe get help, you know. Because, like I said before, we all suffer from things, whether it's depression or something else, you know. And sometimes we can't do it on our own. And he even says that in one of his interviews uh, about how he was, you know, suffering from alcoholism or whatever. Is that, you know, he couldn't do it on his own. He couldn't, um, you know, stay away from it on his own. He, he needed help. He wasn't going to be able to do it on his own. And that goes for a lot of things in life. You may not want help, but sometimes you have to get help from others, you know. It just, that's just the way it is. That's why we're all here together. But with that said, you know, again, it sucks. Rest in peace to Robin Williams. There will never be another Robin Williams. The guy was hilarious. If you're really young, you may not know who he was. Um, you know, because... I think, I don't know if I already said this, like I said, I've tried recording a few videos already and talk about this, but someone said, uh, the, like, the day he passed away, I was looking through some, like, social media stuff, and somebody was like, who was he, and, and, and it kind of took me back, like, how, how do you not know who Robin Williams was, you know, and, but then I realized, you know, different generations, you know, he, you know, started out on a TV show, if I'm not mistaken, called Mork and Mindy, and then, you know, he started doing stand-up comedy. And then he started doing movies. And personally, I remember him from, like, movies like Jumanji, uh, Patch Adams, uh, Goodwill Hunting, you know, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, movies like that were out when I was a little kid. And growing closer towards being a teenager. So I've gone back in, like, recent years... I've watched movies like Goodwill Hunting because Goodwill Hunting, you almost need to be a little bit older to really be able to understand or have the want to see a movie like that. Because for little kids, it would be boring. Um, Patch Adams, I don't really remember that movie too much. I know he plays like a doctor or something. 
if I remember right. But that movie, I know it's a good movie. I do remember seeing it a little bit. Mrs. Doubtfire, that's a classic. The movie's hilarious. Um, <laughs> that movie, that movie is hilarious. But enough of that. I'll quit uh, rambling about the great Robin Williams. It's just hard to to not talk about him, you know, how great he was. But again, rest in peace, Robin Williams. He'll never be forgotten. Uh, and again, if you're not too young, if you're closer to my age, maybe go look at some of his old stand-up comedy uh, where it's not so kid-friendly and he it's, it's hilarious. Uh, but there is something else I want to talk about while I build this house, or at least try to build this house. <laughs> I normally don't do this. As a lot of you guys know, I don't really build and talk at the same time, but I'm trying it and I'm actually liking this house. Um... But another thing I want to talk about really quick, and I hope I don't get too much into a rant like I was when I was previously trying to record this, and that has to do with something that happened here recently in the racing community. And if you've been subscribed for a long time, and you've looked at some of my older videos, you'll see that I, I'm into racing, I just don't upload racing gameplay and stuff. Uh, but I have like Formula One and some NASCAR gameplay. Uh, and maybe you've been subscribed for a long time and you haven't gone back and looked at them, so I don't know, or you're a new subscriber, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I am huge, huge, hugely into racing. Like, it is my favorite thing in the world is racing. Uh, whether it's NASCAR, MotoGP, which MotoGP is Motorcycle Grand Prix, if you don't know, Indy Cars, Formula One, street racing, which I don't condone street racing, but I like like hooked up cars and you know stuff like that like I love cars I love working on cars I love building cars whether it's a real car a model car I just love automobiles and I love racing and yeah and I think I get it from my dad because my dad's I uh, he's like 57 now almost 58 years old and he still rides a crotch rocket and my dad absolutely loves motorcycles more than life itself and I, I love motorcycles too, and he loves cars too, but I'm, I'm kind of like in between. I love car racing as well as motorcycle racing, and again, so does he, but he like will watch motorcycle racing over any type of racing or anything on TV. If there's motorcycle racing, that's what's on TV if my dad's around. He, he's basically, I have it in my blood from him. I love racing. And with that said, I not see I kind of got on a rant there about why I like racing, this and that, and see that's what I keep doing. Um, but again, some of you guys might not be into racing, and you might not be into racing as much as I am. Maybe you are into it a little bit. Maybe you aren't into racing at all. Maybe you aren't into NASCAR, and that's fine because a lot of people view NASCAR as people just going around in circles. And I won't get into all that. Uh, I will just say it's a lot harder than you think. And I've never driven one myself as an NASCAR stock car, but I've been watching it long enough to understand how hard those cars are to drive in just a circle. And you can ask people like Juan Pablo Montoya, who's a Formula, former Formula One driver, former Indy 500 champion, raced on road courses, went to NASCAR, barely did anything. And it shows how hard it is to race in NASCAR. But with that said, and see, here we go, I'm ranting again. Uh... Recently here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start talking about it now. If you are in the racing, or if you're not in the racing, it's been in the news lately that NASCAR champion Tony Stewart was involved in a crash at a a short track in upstate New York this past weekend, and another driver was killed. And in racing, drivers get killed all the time. It used to happen a lot more back in the day than it does nowadays because of the safety changes in racing in general. Uh, drivers used to die almost weekly back in the day, like between like the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, even before that, but all the way up till like the early 90s and the early 2000s, around there, the safety improvements changed and drivers stopped dying so frequently, but drivers can still die and they still do die all the time in racing. You might not hear about it. You might hear about it. Whatever. I'll quit ranting. No, no I'll, actually, no, I won't. I'll just keep ranting. Um, but, you know, again, drivers get killed all the time in racing. And But the reason this made news, if you haven't heard, is because 
Tony Stewart was in a sprint car race, which isn't a sprint cup race, which is NASCAR. This was not a NASCAR race. This was a sprint car, which is, you know, it's a winged sprint car, and they drive these cars sideways around a dirt oval. And Tony Stewart grew up racing these before he went to NASCAR. It's where he started racing was these little sprint cars. And last weekend while racing... He got together with a guy by the name of Kevin Ward Jr. And Kevin Ward Jr. spun out and he hit the wall. And he was perfectly fine at that point. He wasn't injured or anything. Well, he wasn't happy with what happened on the track. So, to display his displeasure, drivers do this all the time. You have to keep this in mind. Drivers will get out of their car and they'll point their finger and throw their hands up. And sometimes even throw their helmet at the car of the driver that spun them out or they made contact with. And that happens, again, all the time. And it happens in NASCAR, I'd say, one every ten races, for example. You know, it happens all the time. And NASCAR races 36 races of the year, if I'm not mistaking. Which I should know that because I watch it every freaking weekend. But, you know, he spun out, he got out of his car, and he starts walking down the track into the path of other race cars and he's not just walking like he's kind of like fast walking pointing his finger throwing his hands up and there's a thing called a yellow flag when a car spins out it's a safety thing they throw a yellow flag so that if the guy that spun out on the track is say taking his safety harness off like his five point harness seat belts off or his helmet or anything like that you know it's to slow the cars down so they don't come flying back around the track and hit the guy and possibly injure or kill him so they throw a caution it happens and almost all oval racing, they throw a caution if a car is in a bad position after it spins out and wrecks. And when they do that, the other cars slow down, you know? Well, when they threw the caution as soon as he spun out, Tony Stewart comes back around, you know, under caution. He slowed down. He's not at race pace. And Kevin Ward Jr. almost gets hit by a car if you watch the video. And then he is, you know, he's takes a step back after almost getting hit then he starts walking again pointing his finger and Tony Stewart at the last second comes in the frame on this video and makes contact with his body so at this point it's car versus human and as most of us know cars and human beings don't usually mix the car usually wins and in this case the car won and he was killed he got sucked under the right rear tire of the sprint car and these cars are open wheel. They don't have fenders over the tires. The tires are exposed. And that's why these cars wreck all the time. You know, when they touch, tire to tire, it throws the car, whatever. But the tires are exposed, and this guy got sucked under the right rear tire. And it, if you watch the video closely, I mean, I don't suggest watching it if you're younger. And it's really not gory or anything, but you have to keep in mind somebody is losing their life here. And, you know, he gets sucked under the tire, and from what I... I you know, perceive it as, is him getting sucked under the tire, if you watch it in slow motion, again, it's up to you to watch this or not, it looks like he slammed down to the ground and slung around the tire and launched about 50, roughly 50 feet from his, you know, where he gets sucked under the tire at, you know, just roughly, but, you know, the safety workers get there immediately, and they start doing what they do, and they start, you know, trying to I guess resuscitate him or stabilize him because you know he was just ran over by a car and they're checking him out you know see if he has a pulse whatever all that stuff and they get him up they take him to the hospital and when he arrives at the hospital he is pronounced deceased he, he know he has passed away and you know the thing that makes me mad is that when you watch this video you're only getting one angle there's only one video of this whole entire thing and you're only seeing it from one side, you know, you're seeing it from the driver's side of the car. If you're from America, the left side is the driver's side. You only see it from this side of the car. The dude that gets hit is on the other side of the car. When Tony Stewart comes in the frame as he hits the guy, it's only for a split second. You, you know, he comes in the frame at the last second as he hits the guy. And it's just not a good angle to, to be passing judgment and saying that Tony Stewart hit this guy on purpose. Because, again, if you haven't heard about this or seen this, everybody on social media, in the news, on articles, Twitter, Facebook, everywhere is saying that Tony Stewart hit this guy on purpose. 
and that he murdered this guy. And this is just my personal opinion. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion, and everybody should know that. You know, you can have your own opinion, that's fine. But you shouldn't jump to conclusions and say that a guy ran a guy over on purpose when you were not there and you do not know all the details and facts. You know, again, in this video, you only see Tony Stewart come in the frame and then he hits the guy and then, you know, you don't see what happened before that. You can't tell if Tony Stewart, you know, adjusted the angle of his car, you know, like the, the trajectory. I can't even say that word. You know, was he already aiming at the guy? Was he already, was he aimed away from him and then turned into him and then hit him? Because you don't see all that. You just see him come in the frame, hits the guy, and then you see the guy go flying across the track and whatever, you know. And people are quick to, to jump to conclusions and say that he hit him on purpose and then use the excuse that Tony Stewart's, uh, you know, he's been a hothead in the past and all that. And it's like, that's the past. And Tony Stewart has been a hothead in the past. And that's why he has the nickname Smoke. You know, because he blows smoke out of his ears, you know. He, uh, you know, that that might not be the real, real reason he has that nickname, but that, that's one of the reasons he has the nickname Smoke. Or for smoking his tires when he wins, you know. Because this guy's legendary. If you guys don't know who he is, Tony Stewart is one of the best race car drivers ever. Like I said, he's raced in all kinds of different cars. He can win in almost any type of car he races in, whether it's going around in the circles on an oval, if you think that's stupid, whatever, or going on you know, left and right on a road course. Tony Stewart has won all types of races in all types of different cars. The dude's 43 years old. He's been racing most of his life. And I don't see Tony Stewart hitting this guy on purpose and jeopardizing his entire life and racing career because this guy's out of his car pointing his finger at him, mad at him, you know? He, Tony Stewart's been racing again long enough to know that the car that he is in is a deadly weapon and can either, you know, greatly injure this guy if he hits him or kill him. He knows that. Literally, I think a year before this happened, it was like a year, not to the day, but it was like a year and a couple days, Tony Stewart was in the, you know, driving the same type of cars. He was in a crash and he broke his leg very very badly and almost didn't know what was going to happen to his racing career because it was such a bad break to his leg you know it took him a while to start walking again and stuff and you know missed a lot of the nascar sprint cup series season the, you know the, the rest of the season and it's like he knows that those cars are dangerous he knows that that car can be deadly he's not going to hit the guy on purpose in my opinion you know again back to the, him being a hothead and all that Yes, Tony Stewart has been a hothead in the past. Lots of drivers have been hotheads in the past and have thrown their helmets and, you know, expressed how they feel to the media. And that's another thing about Tony Stewart and people are, are using against him is Tony Stewart is the type of guy, he'll tell you like it is. He does not care whether he hurts your feelings or not. He will tell you like it is. And that's one reason a lot of people do like Tony Stewart. Uh, I like Tony Stewart. I'm not a big fan of him. He's not my favorite uh, driver. Um, but I, I do like him. I don't mind seeing him win. I, I don't watch him win and be like, oh, Tony Stewart won or anything like that. But it's like in the media, like he'll tell the, the guys in the media, like if they say something to him and he feels like it was a stupid question, he'll blast them for it. You know, he's been known in the past for pushing a photographer out of the way, you know, or spinning a guy out on the track. But that's on the track car versus car you know he's never said oh uh if this guy bumps into me again i'm gonna run him over when he's out of his car you know he's never threatened anybody's life like that uh i think it was last year him and another nascar driver joey logano got into an altercation at the uh end of a race they got out of their cars and they almost started fighting but there was crew members there to break it up well tony stewart you know, they quoted him for saying this, and Tony Stewart's like, next time he uh, touches me, I'm going to dump him every time I see him, which dumping him means I'm going to wreck him every time I see him on the track or whatever. And people are holding that against him, saying that, oh, he's a hothead, and this was bound to happen, somebody getting killed by Tony Stewart and all this. And it's like, that's car versus car spinning a guy out, you know, 
He's not gonna go running a dude over on purpose and kill him. You know? There's certain tracks in NASCAR, again, if you watch it, those drivers won't spin each other out on certain tracks because the speeds are so great that they know they can harm another driver. So they might be on a short track at, like, Bristol, for example, and spin a guy out, no problem. They're going a couple, like, I don't know, 130 miles an hour at the most, which, that's fast, but it's not 200 and something miles an hour where the guy can spin, get sideways, start flipping, and get killed. So those drivers know, they understand that, they understand the rules of NASCAR, even though this wasn't a NASCAR race, Tony Stewart, again, he knows he can kill this guy by hitting him with a race car. So in my opinion, he did not hit the guy on purpose, and people are just blowing this thing out of proportion, and... You know, it's been on my mind a lot lately because, again, I follow racing so much because I have a passion for racing, all types of racing, and I really like NASCAR, and I know a lot of you guys probably don't like it, whatever. Some of you guys may like it. Some of you guys might like it a little bit. Some of you guys might like like it more than I do. I don't know. Uh, But it's just been something on my mind lately, and it just, it really, it really just angers me that people are jumping to conclusions and saying that they know that this guy did this on purpose because the video shows it. And another reason people are saying he did it on purpose is because in the video, right before he comes in the frame and you know makes contact with Kevin Ward Jr. and sadly ends his life, you hear an engine rev up in the video. And people are saying that Tony Stewart floored it and hit him. And how can you say that? You know, you're seeing it from one angle from a camera, a cell phone camera in a grandstand and there's like, I don't know how many sprint cars are on a track at a time because I don't, like I said, I don't really watch sprint car racing that much, but say there's 20 cars out there on the track and Tony Stewart, this guy goes in front then Tony Stewart comes by, hits the guy and then there's other cars still on the track that could have revved their engine. How are you going to say for sure just by from one video that that was Tony Stewart's engine revving up from him flooring it and running the guy down you know there's you know think of the echoes around the track and you know all kinds of things you know air even comes into play like air density and all that or whatever you want to call it i don't even know the technical term right now but you know sound waves travel differently when there's more moisture in air or less moisture in air this or that or you know all that stuff so you can't say that that was Tony Stewart's engine being revved up and running the guy down. That could have been another car behind the camera, beside the camera, down below on the track, you know? Because you're seeing this, like, zoomed-in view across the track from a grandstand where cars are driving underneath the view of the camera that you don't probably see. So, I don't know, man. It's just, it's, it's frustrating, you know? And I, I try to make sense of it myself, and you really can't, you know? That's why still to this day this happened last saturday i'm recording this on august 13th this happened last saturday and they are still investigating this and they say it could take two or more weeks till they come to a conclusion of whether or not there will be you know criminal charges pressed against tony stewart and that he you know could have avoided this and hit the guy and some would say and it's plausible you know it's possible that tony stewart maybe saw the guy and wanted to scare him because these sprint cars again they drive these cars sideways through the turns it's just that's how they work you know they work best by steering it with the rear of the car as well as the steering wheel gassing it you know feather the throttle all that whatever and tony stewart might have wanted to get the car sideways and spit dirt at him which is called roosting him you know he might have wanted to just roost the guy with some dirt and spray dirt on the guy and maybe misjudged it and hit him and if that comes out, sadly, he could be charged with neg- negligent homicide, I believe it is. Which is where he didn't mean to kill a guy, but he did something negligent and killed the guy, you know. And, you know, it's it's it sucks because no matter what, and I'm sorry for like anybody that's not into racing or into NASCAR or don't even care about the story. I just got to express myself and what I, you know, believe about this whole thing, so I'm sorry, um, but, you know, no matter what, at the end of the day, this guy, by the name of Kevin Ward Jr., you know, he lost his life, and his family is going to be devastated, you know, 
forever, you know? They lost someone they love, and he's never going to come back. And on the flip side of that, people also have to feel for Tony Stewart. Because, again, in my personal opinion, he may have meant to scare the guy. He may not have even seen the guy because you're a very limited view inside those cars. And I'm not going to get into all that now because I've already ranted for too long. <gasps> but he may not even even seen the guy. Some of the other drivers said that they barely even saw the guy as they passed him. And some people say they saw Tony Stewart hit him and that Tony did everything good to avoid him. But now Tony Stewart has to live with this for the rest of his life that he killed this guy. And again, in my opinion, by accident, you know. Whether it was just to scare him or not, I don't think he meant to hit him. He may have meant to scare him, didn't see him, whatever. But now it's ruined his career in racing because a lot of people that, first of all, don't like him to begin with are a lot of the people hating on him and saying he did it on purpose before they know the facts. And those are the people that are going to continue to hate him when he comes back to racing if he ever does. You know, this may have mentally ruined him to where he may never race again, you know, he may not want to race again, and that sucks because it was, a, again, in my opinion, an accident, but again, it may not only have ruined the Ward family's, you know, changed their life and ruined this other guy's life by him passing on because of this whole thing, but now Tony Stewart has to live with this for the rest of his life, and, you know, it sucks. And I know I'm just ranting and kind of going off. But again, I just, I had to ex kind of talk about that. Because um, again, it's it's been on my mind. Again, I love racing. I want to know what's going to happen. Uh, I and, and honestly, I hope the right thing happens no matter what it is. I hope, you know, if he does get charged... I hope it was the right thing. If he doesn't get charged, I hope it was, you know, the right thing. Uh, because, again, I like Tony Stewart. He's not my favorite driver or anything like that. But I'm the type of person, I want to see the right thing happen. And if, you know, the other video surface, because there is other video, but it's not public. The police have attained it and are using it as evidence and reviewing and all that. And say he did do it on purpose for some crazy reason, which, again, I don't believe so. Then... As, you know, suck as it sounds, then he gets what he deserves, you know what I mean? So, it is what it is. In my opinion, again, the guy shouldn't have walked down on the track like he did. And I don't know what the hell's going on here. Um, but, again, at the end of the day, there's it's not going to change much in the fact that that guy was killed. Uh, now we just got to wait and see what's going to happen between the legal issues of Tony Stewart, whether they find him guilty of... You know, being negligent and killing the guy or whatnot or not filing charges at all. I don't know. Uh, but my jaw's starting to hurt from talking for so long. <laughs> but, you know, again, I'm going to stop talking about that. We'll see. And sorry if you guys aren't into racing or if you don't like hearing me rant. Uh, I feel like this is the best place for me to kind of express myself. Because uh, even if people aren't listening right now, I'm still talking. I don't care if you're listening or not. <laughs> Um, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys up to date if you want to be kept up to date, which I, I doubt anybody really cares that's listening to this. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, this house right here I'm building, if I haven't already mentioned it, I've been talking for so long, I don't even know what I've said. Uh, everything's a blur right now, I don't know, am I drunk? What's going on? I'm just kidding. This house is a modern house, um... As you can see, it looks kind of modern. It's not, like, totally modern, but it looks kind of modern-ish. I like it. I think it's turning on all right. Uh, hopefully this house continues to, you know, turn out all right, because I usually can't talk and build at the same time. Maybe I need to talk about things more often and build things that make me angry. <laughs> Just kidding. But I think, yeah, I think it's turning out all right. I so far like it. Uh, I might do a little bit more off-camera, because... I don't know if you guys noticed while I was talking, I was kind of figuring out what's going on back here while I was talking, and it kind of turned out flat, which there is a mountain in the way, and I don't feel like taking this whole mountain out. Uh, but this might end up being the last house I build on this Xbox 360, so 
And honestly, I hope it is, because if this is the last house I build on Xbox 360, then that means the Xbox One version has been released and I am playing. <laughs> so, that would be a good thing. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to go ahead and end this. I've been recording for 35 minutes and my jaw's about to fall off. Uh, it hurts. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm sorry again for ranting. Uh, I hope at least you guys like the way this house looks. Um, and again, about the video and all that, I think I said this, but I just, I'm going to say it again. If you are if you don't want to see the video, then there's no point in watching Like If you're worried about seeing it and being like, oh my god, I don't want to watch this horrific, don't want to watch it, and you have like one eye half open and you're trying to like peek at the screen, do I want to see this guy get hit? Then don't watch it. It's Honestly, it's not that like gory or anything. But yes, somebody does lose their life, and you know, my prayers and thoughts go out to the Ward family. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for their loss, even though I know they're not going to watch this or anything like that. But my, you know, I do feel for the guy and his family, even though I feel he shouldn't have walked towards a race car on a track like he did. Um, I feel like, you know, he was wrong himself for doing that, and maybe Tony Stewart was wrong for whatever they find out in the future. But anyways like i said the video is not that bad if you're young don't watch it if you are questioning watch it then don't watch it it's really not nothing to see really and it's not gory or anything but i just want to put that out there there's no real reason to watch it uh you can read up on the story it's all over the news just type in tony stewart and that's all you'll find uh but just a little recap since i've been talking so long my jaw's ready to really seriously fall off now uh, we talked about Robin Williams, and again, Robin Williams, rest in peace, and anybody who doesn't know who Robin Williams was, go check him out, man, he was a hilarious, great person, you know, again, he was hilarious, but he had a great heart inside, and that's what makes this whole thing, you know, about him passing away so sad, you know, it would have been sad if he would have passed away, you know, from natural causes, but... From him supposedly committing suicide makes it a lot harder to know that he was suffering like that <clears throat> from inside. Uh, for whatever reasons, we, you know, at this point we don't know. But rest in peace to him. We'll see what happens with the Tony Stewart deal. And again, rest in peace to Kevin Ward Jr. Prayers to his family. And I hope this house turns out good when it's done. I hope you guys like it. Thank you guys for watching this episode of just Minecraft in general and of me just ranting. And if I still have a jaw in the next video, come back and watch that one because this one I might have to lube it up. It's about to fall off. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.